All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions. There is some tropical weather that looks a little bit possible. We'll break that down as well and then get into the upcoming pattern. Here we are taking a look at our current conditions. And as you can see, we have plenty of precipitation around the nation, even some snowfall here for the Rockies ongoing. This isn't too crazy this time of year, but this should be some of the last bits of snowfall that we'll get this year. Um, so that is going to be the last time we're seeing white and blue for quite a while there. Uh, we do see that there is quite a bit of storminess down here for Florida and then some spotty showers up here for the entire north central and northwest or better yet northeastern corner of the nation here. Let's just go ahead and zoom into the northwest. There is some showers up here, but really minimal activity uh, for this region. We do see these showers heading kind of south uh, west. That's kind of the direction they're heading down through Montana. We are going to see more snowfall spread into these regions here over the next few hours into later this morning and even towards noontime. Keep that in mind as well. As we head further south, we can see there's plentiful amounts of snowfall here for Colorado, southern Wyoming, even into portions of Nebraska, I would say that is ongoing at this point as well. So there is a lot of activity there. Then for the north central United States, we can see a lot of this flow is coming in like this. But we do see there is quite a bit of thunderstorms heading towards the northeast here in this direction. So there is these that we need to look out for. Even some severe thunderstorm warnings popping up with some of these. So thunderstorm activity expected there in the upper Midwest here. Portions of the Great Lakes and even the Ohio Valley here. So let's go ahead and move on. What should we take a look at here? Let's take a look at Florida real quickly because we do have these thunderstorms heading northward uh, through the state right now. So keep that in mind. These are approaching the I-4 region, which is going to be mostly Tampa uh, and even Orlando and up in towards Daytona Beach. So we are going to see these really spreading into this region. And as we zoom in a little bit further, we can see that there is a severe thunderstorm warning actually for Orlando, Florida at this point. Uh, Tampa, you're about to get some thunderstorms there. Uh, and these are going to head north of that I-4 uh, region there and actually spread more into the northern portions of the state later on today. So keep that in mind as well. These areas will be experiencing thunderstorms uh, basically after this video is out. So keep that in mind. Uh, as we head towards the northeast, we can see that there is some lighter or better yet heavier shower activity, lighter thunderstorms potentially taking place in here. A little bit of some sustained snow or rainfall in here for Ohio there. We can see yellows and oranges very widespread throughout that region. So that's going to be impactful to say the least. So we have to watch out for that uh, potential flooding when you get that much rainfall showing up on the radar, especially that widespread. So that's going to be worth noting as well. So overall, there is some activity ongoing, obviously, at this point. Uh, there is some severe thunderstorms, there is some snowfall, there is some heavier showers and potentially some tropical weather coming up. So we have winter, <laughs> we have winter, severe weather and, uh, hurricane weather. Well, not hurricane, tropical weather. Cause it likely, I mean, this time of year, obviously we're not expecting any sort of hurricanes, but I think tropical depressions or tropical storms can't be ruled out. I mean, this would be the first May in a long time we've gone without seeing a tropical storm if we don't see one. So uh, as far as fetched as it seems and as unusual as it seems, this time of year and over the past 10 years, it'd probably be more unusual to not see a tropical storm uh, this month. And we only have 10 days left. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And if we don't see one this month, I'm sure June uh, would probably see one. And if it didn't, then that would be even more unusual, if that makes sense. So we are moving towards that time of year where we have to understand that it is pretty realistic to expect that it is possible to see tropical weather. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a little bit of a look into the upcoming stormy pattern, and then we're going to break down that potential tropical weather, which only the GFS shows at this point. And then we're going to get into the temperature pattern and severe weather. All right, now here is the upcoming pattern. Let me move this on just a tiny bit towards this afternoon, and we can see a lot of this snowfall moves up into the upper Midwest here for a lot of these regions, and then the entirety of the Rockies there is seeing some of that snowfall as well. Uh, we can tell that there is a trough here in the western United States because all these blue lines are dipping down here. And we see the red lines uh, kind of ridging up there. This tells us that there is very warm air heading into this region, which I know that already anyway, so there it is. Uh, we see a huge ridge there actually in the eastern United States bringing very hot temperatures to the eastern United States, very dramatically hot compared to what it has been. Uh, we are seeing a very flip-floppy spring so far. Things are looking very wild. And we do see a lot of storminess take place here, kind of in between the air masses. 
and that's going to be kind of overnight. Uh, this is probably around 5 a.m. Uh, tonight, so we will see a lot of that activity. Snowfall continuing for Colorado. A ton of that happening, actually, by that point. And by tomorrow afternoon here, uh, we can see that a lot of stormy activity here in the southeast takes place here for Saturday, May 21st. Even up and through the Ohio Valley, a lot of the Central Plains, and even the Great Lakes, we're seeing a lot of that activity. Jet stream is still about like this, so still a very large ridge here in the eastern United States and still a lot of cold air surging down into the western and central United States. This is a cold front that's trying to develop in here. So we're going to see this push eastward over time as this air mass moves. We can see a lot of activity still taking place here on Sunday, May 22nd. So thunderstorms will be possible, especially with that hotter weather. And then for Monday, we're still seeing a lot of activity here in the southeast. This was kind of the trend in yesterday's video as well. I mean, just tons of this crazy stormy activity here. Uh, we mostly have a ridge in the west here and kind of a flat jet stream in the east. I'd say overall, it's a pretty flat jet stream. So what this means is you're either going to be dealing with warmer than normal conditions or very, very close to normal conditions, most likely. Uh, and as we approach Tuesday afternoon, you guessed it, that storminess continues in the central uh, upper Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Southeast, so we're seeing just a ton of activity day after day. Wednesday, no surprise, activity continues. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's going to be raining every single day, potentially, for a lot of folks. Thursday here, this is going to be May 26th there during the afternoon. We still see storminess here in the southeastern United States. I can't believe this. Ridge in the west. Uh, maybe a mini trough here in the central United States, but also looks quite warm here along the eastern seaboard here by Thursday. Uh, overall looking warmer for most of the United States, I would say. Where it is raining, you, you will see colder temperature anomalies once we take a look at that. Um, I think there's a bit of a low taking place in here, potentially uh, causing some sort of movement like that, it looks like. Yeah. So we see a bit of a front come through on on Thursday into Friday, so that storminess just continues for the eastern United States. And then Saturday, everything lifts off. Look at that. It just kind of like, just like that. I'll play that back. It's going to just lift off. Boom. So we see days and days of storminess, and then it's just gone. Uh, and we get a little bit more dry there for next weekend. That's going to be Friday. Well, Friday's a little stormy. Saturday, looking pretty clear. And then Sunday. Uh, also, also looking pretty nice there on May 29th. We do see that storminess kind of build back into the west, though. So <clears throat> while things are storming for the southeast, the west is looking pretty quiet. Then that activity in the east moves out, and immediately we see this activity build in to the northwest out here. So it's kind of funny how it just switches sides there. And again, we still have a very flat jet stream, which is going to allow for just normal air to kind of build in for these regions. So real quickly... What we're going to do is take a look at that tropical activity real quick. Uh, I need to move this back because I was viewing this. So this shows us kind of the cyclonic vorticity, which basically means large spinning storms, which tropical systems obviously fall under that, uh, and also stronger low-pressure systems fall under that. We see a stronger low-pressure system here. I'm trying to circle that there. Uh, so that's why we're seeing a lot of those darker colors in the reds, and even you will see purples and pinks indicating even stronger rotation. Uh, that is going to be with those rotating storms. So we see this storm sticking around in here, uh, and that is a part of that storminess that just kind of hangs out in here. Now it's mostly in the long range where we see this system. I want, I want you to draw your attention way down to the south. Let me switch this color real quick. Way down here. You see where I'm drawing in blue? This is going to really build in, and then it's just going to head up the southeast coast just like this. Uh, and we have seen a lot of times in May, uh, storms like to take that track. Also, you'll oftentimes see them build into the Gulf and head up the east coast. But in general, heading up the east coast is a pretty common thing this time of year. I think because oftentimes we have a very strong jet that's hooking around like this that allows for them to just get pulled up with it. So I think that's why that happens earlier on in, in the season, but I just have noticed that happens. So... Uh, again, we see it move, and we're going to see it kind of impact the southeast here. Uh, so it'll follow this track about. So it builds in, comes in, swings around, and this is the end of the model run. But we see it there. It's probably a tropical storm, uh, but it's only really coming close to the United States by about uh, June 4th, June 5th, which is obviously 14 to 15 days out. So 
What I have to say about this is take this with a grain of salt to say the least because this is beyond the extended range. I would say days 7 to days 10 is extended range for me. So days 10 and beyond looking at very specific things that models are calling for here is beyond extended range. It is the far range. Um, and that's not to say that this is impossible. Again, in the beginning of the video, we talked about how May tropical systems and, and June tropical systems are very, very common. And it's almost more unusual that we haven't seen any of that happen. Um, in general, we're still taking this one with a grain of salt because it's so far out. But we are looking at it as a signal that the ingredients are there. That's what this model is thinking. That over the next 15 days, we're going to build into a pattern that will become more sufficient for, uh, for tropical activity. And that is something that we're going to be watching. So we're going to update you guys on this daily, by the way. So every single day, we're going to be breaking down uh, just this vorticity and watching for any tropical systems that come through. So be sure to subscribe and tune in with us daily as we will be keeping all of our eyes on these potential systems. Now, for the total precipitation through the next 10 days, there's no surprise here that the eastern United States is getting absolutely hammered with precipitation over the next 10 days. This is back to the European model as well, by the way. If you're anywhere in the whites, we're expecting no precipitation. Grays will be 0.1 inches or less of precipitation. Your lighter greens, well, all of your greens, actually, better yet, is going to be 0.1 to 0.5 inches of precipitation. Your blues are going to be 0.5 to an inch of precipitation. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches of precipitation. And then your reds will be two to five inches of precipitation. Then we have some browns there. We see that for the southeast, also portions of the central plains for Oklahoma and Kansas. That is where we're expecting potentially five inches plus. Obviously, when we divvy this up into 10-day periods, because this is, this is 240 hours here of precipitation, so that's 10 days total. So if we divide this by 10, uh, if, you're, if you're looking at five inches of rainfall over the next 10 days, that's half an inch of rainfall per day on average, which is crazy. Let me put it that way. It is a lot, obviously. You would think, you know, half an inch isn't that much, but a lot of thunderstorms that bring very heavy rainfall bring less than half an inch of, of rain because it's just so quick. So to get this much over a 10-day period is crazy. Now, for the total snowfall, we're seeing less and less and less of this every single day, which is kind of a happy, sad thing for me. I'm going to be very excited when we start to see snow again, uh, but I'm kind of ready for the summer. I'm more engaged with thunderstorms and, and uh, tropics. That's kind of what I'm honed in on right now, uh, and it feels like we've just gotten through a ton of snowfall, obviously, over the winter, so I'm ready to take a few months off of snowfall. If you're anywhere in the grays, we're expecting a dusting, if anything. Blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples will be 6 to 10. Pinks will be 10 to 20. And then your pastels are going to be 20 inches plus, which is very large amounts of snowfall, obviously, for a 10-day period as well. That's 2 inches per day on average, but really it's not going to be snowing every single day. It's mostly going to be like 20 inches over the course of two days and then nothing the rest of the time. Now, let's go ahead and move on and talk about the upcoming temperature pattern. Here we are taking a look at this, and I'm just going to bring this towards this afternoon. Let's just move on with this. We can see tons of cold air. Let me switch this from the blue back to our yellow, actually. We see tons of cold air up here for the northwestern corner of the nation. Uh, greens and blues is especially far below normal temperatures, so pretty darn cold, especially considering uh, the snowfall that's taking place. We know that we need colder temperatures for that to take place over the Rockies uh, and here. Uh, and that is certainly the case, so lots of snowfall taking place in there. We can see where that cold front is located in here, like I mentioned. So that cold air is pushing its way this way. Expect some more intense thunderstorms along uh, this region where those two air masses are meeting. That is to be expected. And jet stream overall is about like this. We see lots of warm air surging into the eastern United States uh, and lots of cold air building down into the central and the western United States. Now for Saturday, May 22nd here, we can see that there is still uh, a lot of cold air. It's pushing further eastward and still a lot of warmth here in the eastern United States, especially up here far above normal temperatures there in the browns. That's going to be about 20 to 30 degrees above normal actually to be exact. So pretty far above normal obviously. Sunday we see a lot of this warmth build into the east coast. Cold is ever so close. It's really approaching in there. 
Uh, and by the time we reach Monday, that really does impact this, the East Coast. And it's going to feel like a massive cool down, I'm sure, after we've had 90s and upper 80s for days over the course of the weekend. Uh, coming back down to these temperatures is going to feel pretty brutal. Uh, Tuesday, things will look about the same, near normal for a lot of the country. Uh, Wednesday, same deal. Warm along the western seaboard, though. We can see a lot of cold air still in the eastern United States and then a lot of warmth here out west, so probably a ridge in the west. Bit of a trough in the east, although there is some localized warmth here for the mid-Atlantic and portions of the northeast. We can see by Friday that cool down does move directly towards the east coast, though. But we do see a cool down moving down into the northwest, which likely means the warmth is going to build back in for the east. That's typically what we see. Let's keep moving this on. And we kind of do see that happen. Let's move towards this. We do kind of see a bit of a ridge here in the, in the eastern United States, I'm sure. But this is about when the jet stream is pretty flat. So we're seeing very neutral temperatures. You see mostly lighter blues and, and yellows. Not, not as many reds obviously showing up. So most areas, I would say 85 plus percent of the country here on this particular frame is about 10 degrees away from normal. Uh, they're within you know 10 degrees of the average temperature. So uh, whether that's below or above, uh, it's not going to make a huge difference. You're not too far from what is typical. So very, very average temperatures here to end the month of May seems to be the trend here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on here and take a look at that severe weather. Now, I only have three frames to show you because we're only going to be going over the categorical outlooks. We have three general thunderstorm risks here for the day today on Friday, May 20th. So we have one up there for the Rockies in the northwest, which is crazy because they're seeing snowfall. So I guess thunder snow is a possibility, um, maybe, or you know, thunderstorms, then snowfall. I don't really know how that works, but that is pretty interesting. I just now noticed that. We have one there that stretches from Texas all the way up through the uh, Great Lakes and all the way into the northeast. And then we have one there for the southeast. This is all where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have two marginal risk areas, one that stretches from Texas to Michigan, and then one there for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Those are the areas where we expect isolated severe weather. And then we have three Slight risk areas, one there for Texas and Oklahoma, one there for Michigan, and then one there for Pennsylvania. And that is where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible. For day two here on Saturday, May 21st, we still have one up there for the Northwest. And then we have a general thunderstorm risk for like the entire eastern third of the country here. So general thunderstorms will be possible for most folks up there. Uh, and again, that's where we expect general thunderstorms only, but heat every watch morning and advisory as always to be safe. Uh, for our marginal risk area, we expect, uh, in, in the darker green area, we expect isolated severe weather from Texas all the way up through Maine, that large, large, large dark green area. And then our yellow area there for Illinois and Indiana is our slight risk region where we expect scattered severe weather. For day three, uh, it's almost the same thing. We have a little bit of general thunderstorm risk there for Idaho and Montana, but in general, a lot of the southeastern and northeastern United States and even south central United States is dealing with general thunderstorms there in those lighter greens. But again, expect the unexpected, heat every watch, warning and advisory because anything is possible. For our two darker green regions, we have one there for the deep south and then one up there for the northeast and mid-Atlantic. That's our two marginal risk areas, again, where we expect isolated severe weather to be possible. And then we have a slight risk of severe weather up there for the Northeast and the New England states. They're very interesting, where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible for states like Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and upstate New York. Wow, that's going to be quite unusual there on day three or Sunday, May 22nd. But I guess that's what happens when you have huge, huge heat waves like we're seeing uh, and followed by a pretty strong cold front. I'm sure that's what this is with. Now, for today's confidence tab, since we talked about tropical activity and everything, we're at a four out of six just because there are some things that I'm not so confident in uh, that we talked about where there's huge question marks, obviously. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Hill, Michael Cotillas, the Capite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Colisi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.